Red Dice Diaries podcast, a rambling journey through the wonderful world of RPGs by a long-time GM and player. The music at the start of this podcast is Shinigami by Tarek, used under Creative Commons license. Okay, there we are. We now are streaming properly the podcast episode, which is going to be talking about whether we think we're too old or not for the world of darkness. I've got Hannah here. And we've got Lloyd joining us. Right, so we're going to talk about some of the the perceived problems that myself and Hannah, and perhaps Lloyd, we're going to find out as the podcast goes on, have with the world of darkness. I'm going to throw it out there. We were just talking about it um, before we started this. Part of my issue with the world of darkness, it can be summed up with the film Underworld. Myself and Hannah were watching it yesterday before we were about to record a version of this and my issue is that whenever you start to you start to run a world of darkness game it it tends to end up a little bit like the film underworld it's got some interesting ideas in it so in underworld you've got like the the werewolf and vampire war you've got the werewolves having been servants for the vampires you've got this whole sort of into sort of like brood factionality going on between the various different vampires you've got one of the vampires uh, covertly allying with some of the werewolves you've got the whole thing with like combining the two bloodlines and all that you've got some really interesting plot lines which sort of hint at like a really interesting history that's lurking in the background but what the whole film basically comes down to is the protagonist in a trench coat with a couple of pistols walking down a series of dimly lit alleyways with rain pouring down and basically shooting the shit out of a load of vampires and werewolves now there's nothing wrong with that absolutely fine i enjoy that as a film concept i like an action film i also like action sequences in that world of darkness games however i do feel that that sort of tendency moves away from the personal horror of the game. I can already see Lloyd's eyebrows going up. Well, you see, I think your movie starting is a very good movie to start with. But I like to counter with my movie start. Yeah, go for I it. I think go for it is, which I consider pretty much every vampire game to more like what we do in the shadows by Flight of the Concords, which is basically about three vampires living in the house doing. And also the T V series what's well, British and American. Uh, being human. It, being human. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, see, it's very interesting you named this too old for World of Darkness because I think there are two types of World of Darkness players. There's the ones that want to tell that badass story where you are a slick vampire wearing a katsu who can leap off buildings and take people down. And I'm like, yes, I love that. It's great. There's also the people who want to tell, actually, I just want to be able to play a vampire living in this world doing my own thing and i feel as vampire players get older they want less of the gun totting and more of that now there's a whole there's a whole there's a whole um there's a whole bit in between where y'all lovers i see you out there i see you calling me i see you want to come up and tell us about how they want to do the whole like intrigue and talking amongst them but that's a case on its own and I will get to that when we get to that subject. Okay, so, Love, what do you think? For me, what it is, I think what appealed so much about the world of darkness was a lot of the, like, teen angst stuff that was just like, oh, wearing the cool clothes, wearing the trench coat, hanging around with the cool kids, all that kind of stuff. I just kind of grew out of, because... It turns out the cool kids are just as, like, miserable as everybody else. And it turns out that the vampires are just as miserable as everybody else. That there's just as, like, much of a glass ceiling, if not more so, in the vampires' world. For me, I think it may not be that I'm too old for the world of darkness. It may be that I've realised that the real world is so much darker, and therefore I don't feel like I need the world of darkness anymore. Yeah, I mean, I'd go with that a bit, and to, to, to sort of build on it, 
I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that, like, because I think I'm too old for the World of Darkness, that I won't enjoy the shit out of, like, a World of Darkness game I played. I've just pl I've just played in a, a Vampire 20th Anniversary game that Johannes ran, like, a sort of little finite game. So that game, we wrapped that up. But one of the things I enjoyed about that is most of the people playing it and Johannes running it were people who played the World of Darkness a lot previously. So none of us were taking it, like, too seriously because we'd all got a sort of like a bit of a tongue-in-cheek like attitude you know like oh like r remember like when this happened like back in the 90s and like when like vampires were cool and all this and it, and it was done with a certain amount of like irreverence to it and because we were all we all had that similar attitude it was a good fun game it I, I really enjoyed it plenty of action in it we had moments of sort of like character growth and stuff like that obviously compressed because it was like a very small sort of finite game but I think if we'd have been trying to take it 100% seriously, I don't think I would have enjoyed it. I mean, maybe that's a reflection on me. Maybe that I just prefer my games a bit more tongue-in-cheek, you know, with a little bit of like a cheeky nod and a wink here and there, rather than sort of being dead set and serious all the time. But I think part of my issue is when when you're looking at... I, mean, I noticed this when I was like reading V5... When it when it, the book sort of maintaining that very serious sort of somber like angsty sort of like demeanor, and you get a lot of it in like the the fiction and stuff like that, I find it difficult taking that sort of seriously. So when you've got like someone there and they're like, oh, "I'm walking the night alone, no one knows the curse of immortality," and I'm just like, "Really, Re really though? Come, come on, just, just line it up a bit." And I, and I think part of that part of that comes down to myself as a player having less time to actually play in games now so that when I when I do play in a game now I want to enjoy it and relax and it's more of a sort of social thing I maybe don't want to like delve deeply into like the sort of angsty like depression and stuff like that which is one aspect of the world of darkness you know it's a very funny thing you bring that up because Everyone always says the whole, like, God, it's so hard and it wants to be, like, the dark and brooding thing. But I've been looking through, I mean, I must have been thinking since you put this subject up, and I've been going to my head, and in my adult life, I don't think I've played a World of Darkness game where that has happened. See, I, I mean... I think I've just missed out. I'm, am I just really lucky that no one I've played was to be like, Aah. You are. See, see I, I think for myself, so I, I would agree, since I've been sort of, like, what arguably is classified as an adult... I've I've not really been involved in those games. I think the games I was involved in like that, where it was more serious and more when I was sort of like a teenager and when I was like a young adult. So I think possibly a lot of my a lot of my sort of am I too old for it now becomes the fact that my play style has changed mm -hmm. as I've got older. And I'm no longer looking for that whole sort of like angsty like oh I'm a monster I am unless a monster I become sort of thing. I'm just looking to like kick back with a few people, play an enjoyable role playing game, and have a relax on like whatever hours you've got off when you're not working or you're not doing something else well here's the thing i think i think that world of darkness um, and not just vampire like all of them all put together in a nutshell human vampire hunter all of it tell a story because it's a storyteller system where are you tells a story in such a way that it's something that you don't normally could be almost wouldn't normally get from the way the system works like world of darkness by itself is fantastic for investigation games vampire is great for the political talking between each other mage mage is for blowing things up i've got no excuse for that i'm sorry like i, I tried i tried thinking of something cool mage is blowing things up let's let's just surely surely mage is about the metaphysical nature of reality no, and no, the consensus. it's not blowing things up it's not blowing things up and being, <laughs> let's not let's not lie about it that's what it's about it let's always go. seemed to be about like teleporting dogfight chase scenes in your game when you're on mage always. but let's, yeah <laughs> No amount of changing mage to make the rules more robust is going to stop us from teleporting through time and space to punch people. We yeah. all want to do that. Mage, let us do that. that but it's always, I mean, the whole like veil, it's the whole idea of playing this like secret world that's like hidden from the universe, hidden from the universe and everything working back and forth against it. The worlds that World of Darkness literally builds are great to play in as an adult. An adult would understand that world better. They would interact with that world better because there's a lot of things about the world of darkness that we as adults living our lives can relate to. 
and we can put ourselves. Now, I'm not saying I I wake up every morning as a Nosferatu and like I'm like mm, I'm really craving that flesh, but I can re I can relate to the idea of constantly needing something to keep myself going. I can relate to the idea of forming packs of people who are sick who are same thoughts so we can work together. I like the idea, the idea of craving power, greed, like humanity turning against itself. Like we see that shit every day. And once again, we're in a first world country. This is not, this is, this, we're, this is not as bad as it could be anywhere else. But we see darkness in things every day and we've learned to understand and interpret it. So as adults, what or darkness is a way better game. We, so, the order we get, it gets better. So you see, my, my only counterpoint to that would be that I agree as we get older and as you and Hannah have said we see sort of darkness in everyday life whether that be like in small increments or like larger oh, I increments. don't think that's because I've got older I think it's because the world's got crapper well yeah <laughs> there's, there's an, it's, there's it's an argument also, for that as well the, the other thing that gets me with this is how vampires have changed over the last 20, 30 years how our perception of vampires has changed over the last 20, 30 years and I looked up the dates of a few movies. So, 1996... Sorry, 1992, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the movie. That was the first, like, vampire movie that I saw. I was nine. Don't judge me. <laughs> it's too late for that. <laughs> Apart from The Lost Boys, that was the first proper vampire movie that I saw that I, like, really enjoyed that got me into vampires. Hello, pussycat. Shush. But after that, you've got um, stuff like The Craft and then Gary Oldman's Dracula... Well, not Gary Oldman. Bram Stoker's Dracula with Gary Oldman in Same was 1996. Me. That was cool as anything. It, it really was, at the time, one of the coolest vampire movies any of us had seen. That was the time when the world of darkness got big, and that was at least a factor in it. Buffy the Vampire Slayer show came in about then. That started building that sort of enthusiasm for the whole genre as well. It built, and it built, and then 99, Underworld, and for me that's like the point where vampires stopped being cool. And I think the reason is because we started seeing everything from the vampire's point of view. Which is what World of Darkness is. They're just so much less fun when the vampires are a family and they don't really do anything with the humans compared to Fright Night. Group of humans, vampire moves in next door. He's terrifying. He tries to kill some of them. That's a far more fun story to roleplay as a human than as the vampire who's got some annoying neighbours and then he murders them all because it's the world of darkness and you can quite easily kill mortals by snapping your fingers. <laughs> I'd like to counter counterpoint your movie argument because I just realised you're missing a massive movie. Yeah, there, were, there was one not long after that that really, really made things suck and that was Twilight. No, no, not that way. Like, <laughs> oh, I'm, go on, go on. I, I, I meant the other way around. You were missing yeah? a movie that came out in 1994. Go on. After Interview of a Vampire. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, also. boy! <laughs> There and yeah, that's down. that's gonna have had a massive influence that on would have been the big, like, be players like, that, as remember, well. Like, what about this is it's more than the, just a vampire. Yeah, I mean that, yeah. that, 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 that was that's like one of, that was one of the first thing, big ones, it, yeah. which was from the vampire. Every point group of view. had some guy playing a character called Lestat, or a character called Louis. Some. Yeah angsty remake of one of those two. No, no, no but I mean, Lloyd does raise an important point but, that, yeah. w that 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 was one of the, the the first films that actually had like, it, it was it was an interview with the vampire they were the protagonists in their story They weren't really though, were they? Well yeah, they were. They were super I mean like, uh, look, listen The closest that, you get to a protagonist in that film is Christian yeah, Slater Everyone else is just shitting on each other Which is cool to watch in a film But it's not great fun to do with your mates Well no, because the thing, the thing is Chris, I'd rather teamwork together with my friends Because the thing is though Cr Christian Slater, if I remember correctly He was the interviewer in the film yeah, And he's, he's literally just like A plot device to explain why the vampire's there Telling his story you, you could take exactly. you could take Christian Slater out there and have like a cardboard cutout of him there, like a tape recorder. Yeah, but the rest of them the are all 
antagonists to each other. Yeah, yeah, they are. Th they are, but that doesn't stop them being <laughs> protagonists because the story, it's Louis's story. He's All right, yeah. Story. Anne Rice creates some very interesting story structure there. She could How many GMs have you ever seen replicate anything on that level? Yeah, yeah but the thing is, I, I don't think you can criticise... <laughs> Criticise GMs for it not not being up to like Anne Rice's well, standard. Well, no, I mean, of course she, she, not. She, she, she's, she's I'm a just saying it. Unless you've got a GM that can replicate Anne Rice's levels of storytelling well, and control a story to the level that an author could. Well, well no, because that that's like saying like, oh, well, d don't run like a fantasy story unless you can like you can tell a story like as well as like Robert E. Howard or like J.R.R. Tolkien. M m most people can't, but it doesn't mean you can't run fantasy games. In the same way as you can run a vampire game, and we're not expecting you to be like Anne Rice or like Bram Stoker levels, but the, the, the fact is that was, I'm well aware I'm arguing against my original argument here. But but no, I mean, in, in all seriousness, because I'll admit, I, I completely forgot about Interview the Vampire as well. But um, okay. I, I did my research. It, it, it is, well, yeah, I, but I know you do the research anyway, Lloyd, so that's why I just like kick <laughs> back like, at, and I just go, what do you think of this category? Boom, and then like Lloyd like pulls out his like, tome of research. But um, yeah, so sorry, go ahead, Lloyd. So, what have you got any further points about Interview the Vampire? Yes, so Interview the Vampire is a story, is a story like one of the very first few stories that hit mainstream, which was from the point of a vampire. And if you note, I mean, even with Buffy, it wasn't really the point of the vampire, but from Buffy the Vampire, from that movie onwards, people started being able to go, hey, maybe villains could be protagonists. Maybe doing that would be a good idea. That's kind of what the era of World of Darkness's characters are from, where the people with the power are the protagonists and everything else goes aside. And those stories that were told in Anne Rice's series of books, Vampire as that, Cream of the, the Damned, the one with the kid who burnt himself, I don't really know the titles of these books, I'm not very good at it, Pandora, all of those were told from a perspective Oh, oh yeah, and the body thief guy. I forgot about that. That was really good. I really enjoyed that story. Was, oh, <laughs> yeah, the body, the body thief is a good book. Actually, that, that was a little too close to home for me, to be honest. I was a bit like, I, I don't feel comfortable. Anyway, sorry, I'm just trying to mention Well, well no, I was going to say, you, you did make a good point. Though. I mean, a, a lot of Anne Rice's books, like the, the Vampire Armand, the Vampire Lestat, etc., they're literally named after like whose story you're getting in the book. The, you, you can't miss who the protagonist is. It's the title of the book. The clues are there. Yeah, true. And they may not be good people, but once again, it was like, look, if you if you want to look past the whole, oh, they're so dreamy, and play a story, you can play a story about being a terrible person trying to get through life. And that's what World of Darkness has always been about. And all of them have been about that. Not being the good guy, but moving on with yourself. Your, your morals are irrelevant to what you are, and how you to perceive morality is how you move forward. And you can tell those stories way better as an adult than as you can as a child. I mean, some of them be like, well, actually, I played, a, I played my game from, like, when I was 12, and my vampire was fantastic. You friend, that I'll piss off, mate. No. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell a good story, as a young, what's called, if you haven't seen the world when it comes to what about this. The more you know of the world, the better your stories are. That's my argument. That's, that's why I brought it to the table. I can see your point. I still tend to think vampires have a bit of a miserable time of it, and I'd probably just rather play D&D. &D. <laughs> now, whether you want to play the World of Darkness game is up to you. I can't tell you whether you should play that or not, because I have my own opinions about the storyteller system. Yeah, I mean, I, I think for me personally, just to like move it on a bit, part of the issue for me as well is there is more choice available in terms of like RPGs now. So we're talking about like when World of Darkness first got big, you were pretty much, I mean, all right, there's a few other systems, but you're pretty much talking like, as far as I remember it, it was either like D&D &D or like World of Darkness. They were like the two like big sort of dick swingers in town. So they were the two systems that people were playing. But they tend to feel like you're springing off. Like someone would either come into role play and you say, like, oh, which game do you start playing? And they'll be like, I either play like, this World of Darkness game or I play D&D, &D, and then they might move on to other stuff. Whereas I think now, part, partly because I put things like drive through RPG and whatever are available, and I'd say the internet's bigger now, th there's more options for someone like coming into the hobby 
to like have a look around. And don't get me wrong, like there's still like mo people like playing D and D. You've only got to look at like the games being run online to like see that. But there's definitely more options for people coming in now. And I think that the the world of darkness. I mean, they're trying to change it because they're trying to update it now. But I think the world of darkness, as was, was very much a product of its time. I mean, let's remember that in terms of actual like serious updating in terms of like the game background and stuff like that up until recently not a lot of that had occurred so i think whereas a lot of other systems had moved on and i know we've talked about this before where we're saying that like bigger companies they can only risk stepping like so far away from like their established games when they do new versions because they have to keep their sort of like the core demographic i think th there's more range of games now so if, if if you're like, oh, I want to play like a vampire game, but I maybe don't want to play like a, a, a sort of a normal like vampire game, like a sort of World of Darkness vampire game. There's probably like a million different games out there that you could play like a vampire in. Whereas back in the day, if you wanted to play like a vampire, it was pretty much like you made your own stuff, or it was like World of Darkness. That was it. Are you ready for my second point? That yeah, go go for it, man. Holler at your boy. So. I think your points are very interesting. However, when what someone I feel like the few things I want to say is one, I don't think any game does World of Darkness better than World of Darkness. I think the years that they have spent building their fan base and the genre and the feel make it so that game is strong at what it does, which is playing monsters. I think a lot of games try to em uh, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah, uh, you see why I say this. A lot of games try to emulate this, and a lot of games do it very well. But everyone, for some unexplained reason, always wants to go back to playing a archaic and slower version of the things they like. It's almost, it's almost like they have this sort of revival of an old school game that they want to play through. Strange, that isn't it, John? I can't. I can't possibly think why anyone would want to play the old school version of a, re of a revival of a game that's come. I can't. I can't. It's completely they, left my head. They, they, I, just, I, they just try throwing the word old school into your argument. Just to <laughs> fucking win me over. exactly what this is, John. It's always, always. World of Darkness is OSR, and there's nothing you can do about it. That's how it is. That's my argument against that. It's not OSR. It's where's the levels and classes? <laughs> it's OSR. <laughs> It's OSR. No, no, no. Oh, 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 joking aside, I, I do see your point, and I, and I do think there's an argument for the fact that World of Darkness has, and it's, in fact, I don't think you need an argument for it. You, you're right. World of Darkness has an established fan base. Because of that, it's had a lot of work put into the system. I entirely agree. It's been through various iterations. If you include like the new World of Darkness in that, it's even more iterations and variations on the theme. Absolutely right. But I think the I think the reverse is also true as well, because it has that established fan base. There's a certain amount of inertia when it comes to like any innovation or changes in the system, because I mean, again, I'm going to use D and D as an example just because it's easy. If if you if you look at like if you look at like version three of like D and D, you've got you've got your established fan base. Everyone's like, oh, it's all right, but but there's some like problems with it. Wizards are like, all right, it's three, three point five, sort yourselves out. So pe people are like, oh, I three point, but there's still a few problems with it. So wizards get up, do you know what? We're going to alter it entirely. We're going to make something entirely different from the ground up, from scratch. Boom, here's like fourth edition, and then like the the yawning abyss of like hell opened with like people falling into it, and we're like, oh no, it's a war game, no! as they like tumble down to oblivion. And now th this isn't me he's, like trying to slag off fourth edition, because to be honest, I I'm not asked one way or the other about fourth edition, but that I, I think that's a sort of a fairly typical reaction to an established company with like a sort of a known game line, like a known franchise, saying, we're going to change it all entirely and we're going to try and make it better from the ground up. We're going to rebuild it from the ground up. The reaction from the established fan base, let's face it, is not always positive. And you can see this with, I mean, all you need to do to see this is go in any like online forum and go, oh, what's people's favourite edition of D&D? &D? And then just stand back as like the whole like fucking like Facebook group or whatever it is, just like implodes with like some people like going, oh, I've still got 
3.5 books that I still play now. I don't need no 5th edition. People go, well, I'm still playing 1st edition. I were only 19 giggity six. And the whole thing will, like, implode. So I think, I mean, it's already started to happen a bit, not to the same extent, with V5. I've already sort of seen several, like, online locations that I won't name for obvious reasons where people have been like, Oh, I don't like these changes. I don't think they should have changed that. I think this is this has gone worse. And that and V five isn't a million miles away from like twentieth anniversary edition. I'm not saying there haven't been significant changes, they have. But it's not as big a departure from like the previous editions as like fourth edition D D was from like three point five. And and there's already people who are like, Oh, I don't have to do this like fifth edition vampire. So if they'd have tried to move it even further or like Heaven forbid if they'd have said, all right, do you know what? We're taking it back to scratch and we're like building it from the ground up. We're going to make it even better. I think that reaction would have been more pronounced. So I think you are right that there's benefits to an established fan base, but there's also downsides to it. So you're saying the world of darkness is full of extractor fans? I agree. That's people that extract the fun from anything. I don't think that's true. I think World Darkness fans are massive and love the game, and they should, because you know what? They've been playing it since the game came out in 1994, and they haven't stopped since. Some people, See, some people live, like the LARPs especially, like, like we have, we, the LARPing community has so much to thank for World of Darkness. Was it, was it Open Eye Theater? Or my, Eye my Eye Theater. Theater. Scissors, Whatever, paper, that was stone. Like, so much to thank for that. And every iteration of War Darkness, every new thing they add, people are like, we need to find a way to make sure people can play this and watch. And it helps because the game, the game, the, like, that's the problem, right? You can want to play a political entry game, right? But a political entry game is not very fun with four people and the rest of the world. Because that's not really political entry, is it? It's not really like, back and forth here. Back and forth against one person, that's a GM. He's like, great, and make some shit up. If you're doing it against a room of 20 people, it becomes more interesting. And yeah. Darkness is 100% built for things like that, so we can take it away and emphasize on those things. I, I, I mean, I know myself and Hannah have both played like a fair bit of the Mind's Eye theatre games, and I think that was one of the, both the strengths and the weaknesses of it. Because I, I entirely agree with you, like, it's far better. If you're like doing like some like a primogen meeting or like a vampire council meeting, if you're actually sat down around a table, with like a load of other people all like playing their the different like clans. The nerds that you are. Yeah, exactly. If you're sat down with like a big if you're one of those six players that gets to sit on the yeah, top yeah, table I'm, I'm, I'm instead of the other fourteen that sit at the other end of the room in silence kill me. waiting waiting oh. waiting so, for so, the nine o'clock fight. Yeah. See so, see so, see so, so, <laughs> my response to that would be like if you're sat on your own not doing anything, that's the problem. That that, that 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 that's that's and this this comes back to something I was like listening to in um one of Rune's thing is videos where he's saying about that whole idea about like are the GMs responsible for like the fun people having a game session? We need to like move yeah, exactly. That's an entirely appropriate facial expression, Lloyd. We need to like move Rune's thing was saying himself, we need to like move beyond that. Because the fun of everyone responsible is everyone's responsibility. So it's yeah. like I, I never really had a time when I was playing like these games where I was like, Oh, do you know what? I, I'm like I'm not not in the I'm not in the primogen council, so I'm sat in like doing nothing. Because I, I need to be like, do you know what I'm gonna do? I need to gonna make sure that I'm gonna get on that primogen council, <laughs> or I'm just gonna go out and like do some random shit that amuses myself or like furthers my own goals. And then like <laughs> other people can like deal with it if they want. And by that token, you like bring in more people. In. And whether that's like you go, oh that venture has been like nazzing me off, and he like he owns a hospital. I'm gonna like do something unpleasant to that hospital or whatever. Whatever it turns out to be, you're automatically then getting other people involved in it. I remember that game. Maybe That's the other thing as well about not being, being old enough to play World of Darkness. Because in all After World of Darkness, when you are younger and you want to get vengeance, you think of younger things like, I'm going to kill like his family or some shit. I don't fucking know. Yeah, I'm evil. Ooh. But when you're older, you learn the wonderful art of petty revenge. Like simply just casually telling all of his friends that maybe they shouldn't hang out with that vampire because it's an STD. And he's like, why's my name gone by? Or you simply just casually move some funds into his account so the police give him a bit more trouble. You learn, you learn how to be evil the older or, you are. Or you fleshcraft yourself to look like a random member of one of the other coteries and then go and try and assassinate someone. That's and right. even though you got caught, 
You didn't really get caught, did you? Because you were just on CCTV looking like that other dude. Well, I, th I think that comes down to like, always have a backup plan if you're going to do an evil plan. And I could, I could do an entire like, podcast. Um, but yeah, every, being older means you understand morality. You understand how to be evil. So you know how to play these evil characters better. And it's not just goony evil. You know what's right and what's wrong. I, I think for me, again, part of like the reason why I'm probably, you know, there's no problem about it. Why I am a bit sort of jaded with like the World of Darkness background is, again, part of it's like an oversaturation of it. Because when I, when, I, when I was like, yeah. I played in like so many World of Darkness. When I was a student, you know, and you had free time. Do you remember that? I, I, I used to like play so many. I mean, at one point I like lived with like two, three other role players and we were playing in like more than like a game a night there was a point where we were playing eight games a week and, and they're all at world least of six of them were world of darkness see this is this is it john this is why you and i are very different i <laughs> grew up in a full play community surrounded by that stuff and i actually went out and lived an actual life <laughs> i should have did things just Maybe, maybe you should have taken... <laughs> yeah, 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 but look, look at it this way, Lloyd. You, at the end of the day, you're still sat in a room talking to me about World of Darkness. <sighs> yeah, well, I'm so pretty. <laughs> All right, yeah, I've got to give you that. <laughs> but this is yeah. the last time you can pull that argument out. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm I, sick of you using that. I think I'm mostly just jaded because I worked at the roleplay shop for so long and there is nothing more tedious than listening to somebody tell you about his new... Uh, Bruha character, or, or his new Malkovian. But to be honest, I mean, that problem of being too old is the same for a lot of genres, and I think that's fair. I just, it's just World of Darkness breeds a special kind of people, and a special kind of game, and how you enjoy it is more than just up to you. It's about the experiences you have. And that's what makes World of Darkness such a great game. Yeah, I mean, all of, all of don't, 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 don't get me wrong. I mean, obviously, like, the title of this like, podcast is like, slightly like, tongue-in-cheek. But, and I'm not saying that like, the World of Darkness is like a horrible game. Like, say, if if someone I knew was a good gem turned around tomorrow and was like, oh, I'm thinking of running a vampire game, I'd be like, sign me up. But um, I, I think as well, part of it comes down to the fact that, like, having played in so many games over the years... You tend to start noticing like repeating patterns of sort of stuff that occurs, and I know you get this in every game, not just World of Darkness, but you start sort of noticing like the same sort of patterns recurring. That you become a bit sort of like blasé about it, I suppose. You know that whole like familiarity breeds contempt sort of idea. True. Yeah. But yeah, I think I think we've got our points now, guys. I think I think that was it. That was a good thirty minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Well, yeah. At least. It's really just about three minutes. I'm not quite sure. So, so does anyone have any other points they want to bring up or things they want to discuss? I know you've got like a mountain of research, Lloyd. I know you've got yeah, I do, actually, up. I do. But most of them I've, I've managed to slowly cover in like little bits in between. I would like to end on a kind of a note, and the note is games are there to help you experience things that you can't experience in real life. And even though our TV and our things influence what we see, it's always good to try and break your boundaries and try something different. That's and true. What the Darkness is one of those games is. that you can try and portray a side of you that you may not necessarily be able to portray in other games. The darker side, the not the nice side, and not in the, well, <laughs> my family was killed by the problem. I'm group. just not nasty enough. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it helps to play a little bit, be a little bit wrong, and that's kind of what what it happens is about. I feel. I, I mean, I, I did think you raise a very good point. I mean, I think it, it's a good way of exploring things that, like, hopefully, people won't have to like experience in real life. Because it's like, if you think, I mean, it's like, I, I myself as a person, I, I, I wouldn't even contemplate like going out and like killing somebody. But that's something that you can like, you can face in a vampire game. But you diabolize me at least half a dozen times. <clears throat> I, I deborahized two people in Johannes's V20 game. Well, you know what? To be honest, they had it coming. If we're gonna be, it's gonna be a lesser generation, mate. Like, come on, mate. Come on. Come on. It's gonna make it easy. Anyway, yeah, that's my point. I wanted to bring up that. Try something new and try and play a side of you don't know. It's the same reason why I play a lot of indie games because that's the kind of stuff it brings up. Exactly. Have you got any additional See, points you'd like yeah, to raise? Yeah. If you enjoy all that world of darkness angst, go for it. Have fun. See, I, I think for myself, I, I think there's 
there's potentially nothing wrong with like the, the world of darkness per se. I think for myself, I I like to see I like to see games where it's not taken too seriously, and that's just that's just my personal preference, you know. Because at the end of the day, you, you could be as angsty as you like, but we're all playing the game to like enjoy it. That's like everyone in the group. So I, I think as long as it doesn't get too serious. I, I'm quite happy with like World of Darkness. I play like almost any World of Darkness, apart from Werewolf, because I don't like it. But <laughs> I, I, I play almost like any World of Darkness game you want. Oh, you mean the one that encourages teamwork? You don't like that one? Nah, it, it's, it's all the like, hippie eco, <laughs> what it's all the hippie eco warrior bullshit. I'm the one where you don't get to murder all the other player characters. You're not a fan of that one, John. Well, and th this this is I, I'll tell you now, like this is some of the like me and I have discussed a lot of times. I, I'm very much of the opinion that like certainly in um in like a tabletop vampire game. The whole idea is that you're a coterie, right? So you're like a group of people that like, working mm -hmm. together. In Mind's Eye Theatre, that is not the case. Yeah. You you are like yourself. You're an island. Your your aim is to like claw yourself to the top of the pile over the bodies of the fools who stand in your way. Now, yeah. if, if you tell me like we're going to play a game, like we're going to play like a D and D game, we're all in a party. I'll be a party player. I will help people out. I will do whatever I can. If you tell me we're in a game where like the aim is to basically better yourself at the expense of all of the people. I will likewise throw myself wholeheartedly into that, and and I will like I will like Terminator style like roll over the bones of those people in my way. Well, thank you for sharing that, John. I remember that next time, <laughs> next time everyone runs a game that you might do that in. Yeah, that, that's why right. consider it a bit of a warning. Like I say, if, if it's a game where it's like, well, the aim of the game is, with, I mean, even tabletop vampire that you're playing a coterie. Great, I, I'll be I'll be a team player. I'll be a group player. That's fine. If the whole aim of the game is to like for you to better yourself at the expense of other people, that's the aim of the game, and that that's what Mind's Eye Theatre is really. The, the the two aims of your stereotypical Camarilla game in that Mind's Eye Theatre are: don't break the traditions, make yourself as powerful as possible. That that's the aim, the aim of the game, as it were. That's fair. Right, well, if no one else has anything to say, I think that we're pretty much done there, guys. So, thank you very much, Hannah. Have you got anything else you want to say? Or... Have fun being a vampire. Take care. We'll see you all soon. So, that's it for this episode. If you have any questions or suggestions for things you'd like to see in the podcast in future, please either email them to reddicediaries at gmail.com or drop me a voicemail at Anchor. Until I see you next time, whenever you're playing, take care and enjoy yourself. <laughs>